Today, I'm going to show you how to install the TMC2209 on a Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4 Turbo. So I need to walk you through a couple of things on the board. First of all, we're not going to be using actual end stops. We're going to be doing sensorless homing. And our steppers today, we have our X stepper, our Y stepper, our Z stepper, our E0 stepper, and our E1 stepper. We're going to actually focus on our X stepper port. So I'm going to pop out the pins because this is for a spy configuration. And the rationale for removing these is the actual configuration that's going to be used is actually UART. So we need to check this actual configuration. So as soon as I get this pin popped out for the jumper, we're going to actually reconfigure it. In order to do that though, we need to find out in our browser for the actual manual. So I'm going to go over to the manual and inside the manual, you have your Big Tree Tech SKR board operating instructions. So I'm going to scroll down kind of quick so I can find the instructions. Note how we're going to be actually on direct power. So we're not going to move the jumper and we're going to configure direct power to do this upgrade. So down here, they show the actual board. They point out what's around the board. I'm going to skip a lot of this information and go straight into the stepper drivers. Now we're not using stepper. That would be something like the A4988 or the DRV8825. So we need to go down a little bit further and here's TMC driver for UART mode. So the UART mode stepper we're using is actually the TMC2209. So they're saying place the jumper right here. So I'm going to go back over to our workbench and I'm going to place that jumper where they said. So it's going to be right over here. And so we're all set now with the jumper so we can actually install the actual stepper driver. So I've done a tutorial on the TMC2209. So I recommend that you take a look at that in the upper right hand corner, but for now I'm just going to install it according to the pin location. And that's in place. Next I'm actually going to install the power that runs from the PSU or the power supply unit. And it's unplugged currently. So what I'm going to do is actually use these two connectors and notice how it's set for ground and signal over here. The red is actually signal and the other one is actually ground. I'm sorry, I have to actually re-explain this. This is actually power or 24 or 12 volt power for red and for black it's actually ground. So I have feral connectors on there that I placed in order to control the actual wire that's below it. I highly recommend doing this as it can save you from replacing your board if you actually bridge wires. And so I'll put Amazon affiliate links in the description for your convenience, but they just slide in like so, and then you just torque them down like so. This will allow us to power the board with our power supply unit. Next, I'm actually going to connect the USB. There's no USB power, so nothing should energize on the board just yet. And I'm also going to connect the actual NEMA stepper driver connection cord over here with the DuPont connection. Then I'm going to actually plug it in so we can program it. And as you can see, it's energized now. So I'm going to take you over to the desktop in a second and let you see that the actual uh, configuration pops up for the SD drive. So I'm going to bring you over there right now. And as you can see, it says firmware.cur. That means that it's the current firmware that we're working with and the last time we loaded it. So we need to know that when we actually work with VS Code. 
So I'm going to go over to VS Code now. And inside VS Code, we need to actually load the firmware that we're working with. So we're going to go to Open Folder. It's in my Downloads folder. I've already extracted it. So I'm going to click on that. Then the second one, so that we're inside the Marlin folders. And then I'm going to say Select Folder. Then I'm going to go to the Marlin folder over here. Then the Source folder. Then the Core folder. Then I'm going to go to Boards.h. I'm going to do a search on SKR, and as you can see, there's several places where it's listed, and the board that we're actually working with is the SKR Turbo version. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm also going to note what the chipset is, which is LPC1769. If we were working with the other board that's not Turbo, it would be LPC1768. That'll be relevant in a moment. So I'm actually going to minimize that and go over to configuration.h and I'm going to search on motherboard. Inside here, I'm going to highlight the ramps board and paste over it because we're actually working with the SKR Turbo. But I actually picked the wrong Turbo as you can see here. So I'm going to go back and actually highlight the correct one and copy it. And then I can place that in the right place. So I'll just highlight this real quick, paste, and then I'll go up here and change the serial port to negative one. And then I'll search on the actual steppers that it normally thinks it has, which is the A4988. And I'll remove the comment for the X stepper because that's what we're working with. Next, we actually have to paste in the TMC2209, which I've just done. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find default access steps per unit. And currently we're set to 1 16th of a step with our stepper driver. But I want to make it more precise. So I'm going to double it twice, meaning instead of 160, we're actually going to do 320. And I'll show you the step on the other side that we have to do for this as well. So once that's done, we have to actually invert the direction. So I'm going to search on invert. And as you can see down here, the actual direction is set to false. We're going to change that to true. That will resolve it going in the wrong direction in this case. But if you're going in the wrong direction, you can always flip the logic to false. Once this is set, we're going to actually go to configuration advanced. And we're going to search on first. 800 and the reason for this is I need to show you the actual configuration so I'm going to change the X current to 750 and this is where the 1 16th of a step becomes an issue it doesn't match what we just changed for 320 so to double it it would be 32 and to double it again it would be 64 so now that that's set correctly, we're going to have to actually set up debugging to check things. So I'm going to search on TMC underscore debug. And this first setting right here that's commented out for monitor driver status, I'm going to remove the comments so we can actually use these debug codes. Once you've actually completed your setup of your drivers, you can always comment this back out. And then we need to search on TMC debug again and remove the debug comment here. That'll set up our debug. Now we need to search on sensorless homing. And I need to go up one because we just passed it. And we need to actually enable it by removing the comment. Once the comment's removed, we can actually change these settings. So as you can see up here, sensitivity for the TMC2209, the highest sensitivity is 255, and the lowest is zero. So the optimal number that I've come up with is 120, but you may need to adjust this per your configuration, but this is what I start with. And so once that's set, I'm actually going to have to enable one last thing. This is kind of an extra thing that I came across. It's homing bump. And what this means is once it homes, 
it'll offset from the end of that axis where it was a few millimeters. So I'm going to use this one right here, which is define, and then it's homing back off post in millimeters. And I'm going to change that to 10. So it should hit the axis and then move away by 10. Next, we need to set up platform io.ini. And like I said before, our default environment is LPC 1769 for the turbo board. If it were not the turbo board, it would be LPC 1768. Then I'm going to do a clean to make sure there's no previous build that might interfere. And I'm going to click on the upload portion. Now this may fail, so we may have to do a second build, but on occasion, if it does fail, do a second build with the upload. And if that doesn't work, then find the first error in your actual compile slash build because it says compiling right here, like you can see. And that would lead you to the possible error that was introduced. Now, for those that don't know, I also have a Discord channel where you can discuss this with me or anybody else that's in there. They should be able to lead you to the correct answer. And also, on or during the week, I'll do a Monday live stream where people can actually ask questions on Twitch. And I'll leave a link to Twitch in the actual description. But let's go over and check on actually the SD card that was for this particular build. And as you can see now, it no longer says firmware.cur only. It also says firmware.bin. This is what we just loaded onto that drive. So I'm going to go over to the workbench for a second. And I'm going to disconnect the power. And this will help actually load the actual firmware on the drive it takes a second to discharge so give it a second and then maybe also take this one out then re-energize the system by plugging it in and like always do not touch the area of your board because you don't want to damage it or yourself so now that it's powered back up i'm actually going to go and check on the actual drive and as you can see the drive over here now has updated to the current build that was originally firmware.bin. So we're going to go over to Pronterface for a moment and we're going to zoom out. Let me just show you on the desktop what it looks like. This might take a second to zoom out. So as I zoom out, you'll be able to see the actual configuration that I set up to actually test the end stop. So I'm going to go to Pronterface now and I'm actually going to try and connect, but we may have issues. So as you can see, it says COM port 1. So that's an issue that we need to address. So I'm going to bring up Device Manager and show you how to figure out what your actual COM port is. So over here in Device Manager, what you'll see is the actual configuration that we're working with and because in device manager we don't know what our com port is we can figure it out by doing that and it's com port 13. So we're going to go back to Pronterface and inside Pronterface we're going to change the 1 to a 13 and then we're going to say connect and now the printer is online. So to test the actual access, I'm going to start with home and we can see what the homing bump does. It should bring it away about 10 millimeters. So that's the homing bump. Then we can test to see that it moves ahead 100 millimeters and then ahead another 100 millimeters. So we'll try this one more time. And I want to take a moment to thank you for watching my tutorial. And please like and subscribe and all the information you may need will either be found on Discord or you can ask me during my live streams on Twitch. So thank you for your time and take